for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And with the 80, 20 approach, I think uh, when folks first hear that, it kind of, it makes sense, right? You get like this, uh, we talked about memes a little bit, but like you get like this, this banter thrown around where it's like, you're running in this gray area, you're in this moderate intensity zone where it's too slow to be impactful enough to be really leveraging your faster running, but it's too fast for you to really be you know, leveraging your slower running stuff. In fact, it's actually probably fatiguing you. So you're doing less of the stuff that would actually move the needle more at the end of the day. And that's where it kind of gets, gets a little, a little goofy. And then when you kind of throw into it, just eventually most folks, I think are getting around to like, what pace am I going to run on race day or try to run on race day? And they're going to probably try to do some work at that intensity just to familiarize themselves with it more or less. But in the lead up to that, like, is there a point that you look at specifically where you kind of cross over from what you would kind of call easy into moderate? Yeah. Um, you know, you know, th obviously, you know, these, these definitions don't come from God almighty, like we, we come up with them and, you know, scientists have proposed different definitions, like, you know, where's the proper dividing line between low and moderate but there seems to be a consensus forming around uh, the first ventilatory threshold as the, the appropriate uh, border between low and moderate intensity. And that's an intensity at which there's um, uh, kind of an abrupt spike in your uh, breathing rate or rate of ventilation. Um, and it's not one that you notice. It's not where you begin to hyperventilate. There, there are actually two points where, the, where those, normally as your exercise uh, intensity increases, your breathing rate increases you know, glad, gradually, linearly. But there, there are two intensities, separate intensities at, at which there's like an abrupt spike. The first of them is this first ventilatory threshold. And when you're just below it, um, uh, the, the exercise is not at all stressful or not very stressful to your autonomic nervous system. So you can handle a lot of it and you can recover very quickly from it. It's beneficial, but it's one of those things where it, like a small amount provides a very small benefit. So you, you gotta do a lot to get a lot of, out of it, but you can also handle a lot. But when you cross over that threshold, um, it becomes a lot more stressful to your nervous system. So you can't handle as much of it um, and it takes longer to recover from it. Um, so it's not like it's bad for you. And, and like, you know, you do, you know, most, <clears throat> unless you're the kind of person who does a hundred mile races like, <laughs> like you, like most races are in the moderate intensity range. So you need to spend some time there. But the, the problem is that most runners without even realizing it uh, spend about half of their time, like just over that threshold. Um, so they're, they're, you know, sort of needlessly stressing their nervous system and not really getting any more benefit than if they just, you know, put the brakes on themselves or throttle back a little bit. Um, and, and we're at a truly physiologically low intensity. Yeah, they almost blow past that first ventilator threshold and get them up, themselves up near that that second one where they're almost doing just below like a lactate threshold type workout when the intention is not to be doing that. Um, yep. And it, it is interesting because it's kind of a fun pace to run sometimes too. And like if you're out, because you, you feel like you're working, but you can also do it for a significant amount of, or fairly significant amount of time. So I think people do get drawn into it where they're like, well, if I could do that for an hour, it can't be doing too much damage when in reality it's the cumulative stuff over time that I think is going to really kind of put someone in a bad spot with that. But